Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up. In today's video, we're going to look at some of the best couch co-op games available on the Nintendo Switch. We've done a few of these videos before, although I don't think we've ever really explicitly said couch. We've kind of just said <laughs> co-op in general. And obviously this one will have some newer games on that weren't out then. We will do in the future a LAN version and possibly even an online one too. That'd be quite interesting to look at. Yeah, you guys asked for this one. So I think we've, uh, we've come up with some decent games and a couple that are brand new as well. What are the couch co-op games that we recommend? Well, let's find out. Okay, we're gonna start with perhaps an obscure one, but this is one that we played all the way through. Very difficult game, but great fun in co-op. This is Tiny Barbarian. So this is a 2D platformer with a very much a, a retro look to it. You very tiny sprites. As I said, a very difficult game, very high ceiling for difficulty, but having that co-op partner with you just keeps you motivated to keep trying. And uh, when we did finish this game, I think it was one of those those moments in terms of games that you, you remember for a long time. Yeah, this has a brutal difficulty uh, spike at the end, doesn't yeah. it, in terms <laughs> of its last boss. But it is very good, very, very well balanced actually up until that point, I'd say. Uh, and very enjoyable as well, and sometimes goes on sale. I think this is uh, Nicalis, isn't it? This is Nicalis, so it did get a physical, but it's one that you don't see very often. Uh, it didn't release outside of North America, I don't believe, as mm. well. So yeah, you're kind of looking for an eShop sale on it now, really, because it is quite expensive. But if you do see it on sale, it's a, it's a very good game that perhaps some people won't know about. Following on from that then, we've got It Takes Two. Now you first told me about this one. I didn't get to play it on Switch first. I think I played it on PlayStation. Uh, it might have even been Xbox actually with, with one of my kids in co-op. And yeah, very good. As the title suggests, it's designed as a two player co-op game, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. So it's a story of uh, a husband and wife that are arguing a fair bit. Very like Disney-esque set up in that the, the daughter wishes they'd get on better and as part of that they get shrunk down and like get lost in the house like honey I shrunk the kids style and have to work together to obviously try and get to the end of it so you, you will be solving environmental puzzles as a team to get through stages I played this one with my wife who's not a big gamer mm. and she enjoyed it I mean that's kind of a mark of a good co-op game you know yeah, it does use quite a bit of quite tricky platforming sections, you know, where like you're going through the pipes and stuff and you need to like land on specific places, but it does it well enough that it doesn't feel frustrating, I found. Yeah, as I say, for her to enjoy it, because you do have to control a camera behind a yeah. 3D character, which she struggles with, as you said, made specifically for, for co-op as well. There's a boss that's a hoover, isn't there? Yeah, the first boss is a <laughs> hoover. Yeah, that's right, it's good. <laughs> New one now then, we've got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Splintered Fate, which is uh, a roguelite, but don't let that put you off. You go on runs as obviously the turtles, uh, you have to try to save Splinter ultimately, but you'll, you'll have to do a lot of runs to get to that point. If you die, it kind of references the fact that you did. If you don't, if you complete the run, it does the same. So it's got a nice bit of continuity to it and some good meta progression outside of each run as well. But obviously this is a co-op list and that co-op in, in couch co-op is, is very good isn't it yeah you've got co-op for up to four of you obviously with the four turtles and it just works flawlessly it's very very quick the game runs at 60 which is nice and as we haven't said but you may already know it has that hades feel to it very quick dodges finish an area choose like a perk isn't it and yes, then move on that's right the one thing i will say is that we did encounter a bug in co-op specifically in yeah. co-op it never happened to me in single player so i don't know if that's something that is you know across the board and other people have encountered it or not but we'll mention it because it happened uh, it wasn't terrible it wasn't like um it made player two very very powerful because it was it kept, great <laughs> yeah for, for you you were loving it because obviously it kept giving them extra upgrades only happened once so i don't know but we'll mention it just in case a more well-known one then is Vampire Survivor. That's been out a long time. Solo developer, bullet heaven shooter. <laughs> so you get upgrades and then you're just trying to avoid enemies whilst destroying as many as you can. Yeah, and I mean, that alone would be enough to get it on a list like this because playing with a friend, that's a lot of fun. But the more you play this game, you start to realize just how many layers it has to it in terms of how you use the upgrades that you'll be offered as you go along and how you can start to merge those with other upgrades to create these really powerful hybrids. And obviously when you're playing with a friend, that's something you can discuss as you go along and you can start to um, agree on builds that each character is going to go for once you've played enough of it for all that to make sense. 
it's I mean it goes it sells for about three pound mm. maybe four pound which is crazy in and of itself but when you start to get those layers of depth into it as well this is fantastic fun this is one of my favorite couch co-op games yeah I think you base you managed to work your way through almost the entirety of this game which is not an easy thing is it? There's lots of variations and weird things you have to do. There's a little dog that does no damage. That yeah, there's all kinds of crazy things in this game. Yeah, I, I did. I finished this one, and it took about 25 hours. So for four pounds, you, you can't say no. Right, we're going to throw a beat em up in here now. There are so many to choose from. Now we've gone for maybe a, a slightly obscure choice in Double Dragon Gaiden. Now the reason we've picked this is because it is slightly different in that it's got roguelike tendencies to it in that you upgrade your characters as you go along. There are four characters to choose from. But again, just having that slight difference in terms of being able to upgrade your character, I think works well for co-op. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we initially had Castle Crashers in it, which is a great one. It's quite standard. Yeah. And as Glenn says, the roguelite elements actually add not competition to it, but it, it does have that nice feeling of you get a power up, you know, and then your partner gets something different. It's, it's good. It works well. It does. It just gives it an edge. You know, whenever we play a co-op game, as much as it is co-op obviously mm. you're working together just having some sort of competition or some sort of edge to it yeah. makes it more fun i think depends who you're playing with you have to have a bit of banter with the person you're playing <laughs> with but um if you are looking for other options we have just made a best beat em ups list for the switch so i will uh, put a card to that in the top right hand corner after that is the most well-known one probably on this list. It's Overcooked. Now, there's been a few of these. They're all good games, but I think the first one actually is the best. Yeah, I'd agree with that, actually. I think uh, it just nailed its formula first time round. Everything after that was bells and whistles, which is there's nothing wrong with that, but I just think this one, in terms of pure gameplay, is, is the best. Another one I've played with my wife, and we, we finished this one, and again, for her, that's almost unheard of and uh, she had a lot of fun with it it's one where you're it's like a pressure cooker no pun intended game where you <laughs> you're constantly under stress of having to not be the weakest link in the team mm. so you have to fulfill your role and it, it again it does have that argumentative side to a co-op game where you don't want to let the team down so maybe again just make sure you're playing it with someone that can <laughs> you know take a barrage when, they, when it's needed but really very fun game when you get into the flow the next one is Super Mario Wonder. Now, I'm just gonna caveat this and say that I do feel that there are other options for this type of game, obviously a 2D platformer, that are perhaps a bit more accessible if you're playing with, say, your children or just someone that's not as skilled. Things like Rayman Legends or even the other Super Mario game, is it Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe, whatever mm. it's called. Not as good games, but slightly uh, works slightly better as co-op games with younger people i would say but super mario wonder is is a fantastic game it's one of the best if not the best mario game in a long time and i include 3d games in that as well as far as i'm concerned its level design is bang on it's nintendo at their best and uh, and it does include co-op like i say I, I do think you need to play with someone that's matched skill wise with you mm -hmm. to get the most out of this one but there were some other options there if, if you want but uh, absolute top draw game so Pikmin 3 is our next choice, the Deluxe Edition, not Pikmin 4, because they messed up co-op. Yeah, they barely included it. Uh, Player 4 was a glorified pointer. You pointed at things and that was it. Yeah, I don't know why they did that. Again, Pikmin 4 is probably objectively a better game, but Pikmin 3 Deluxe is a far superior co-op game. And uh, you, you basically can split up your team and you can go off along the islands or the levels separately and take you know, a, a team of Pikmin with you each and go and find the uh, the parts that you need or it's fruit, sorry, in this particular game. Again, if you're playing in couch co-op and you're chatting as you're doing it and you're planning out your routes, it just works very well. I had a huge amount of fun with this. Again, definitely up there is one of my favorite co-op games on the Switch. The penultimate game is Metal Slug. Now, I just think this is one of those uh, co-op games that very rarely gets beaten in its own field. You know, it's a run and gun. There are other options. Again, there are so many. You've got the Contra series in so many different forms. There's a Contra collection, there's the new Contra game. There are things like Shock Troopers, if you like a more top-down shooter, you know, where you're starting at the bottom and walking upwards, or uh, Ikari Warriors is another one. I just think you can't beat the first Metal Slug. And again, you, you have the sequels on the Switch as well. That first one is just pure fun, and uh, it sells for about six pounds on the Switch. Sometimes goes on sale, but I mean, for six pounds, you can blast through it in about half an hour. It's more about the fun you'll have whilst playing it. And because it has those arcade roots, it's about seeing how many lives you can, you know, limit the lives you give yourself each time you play and see how, how much better you can get. So you need to want to play it a few more times to get the most out of it. But I've played this game so many times, it's unreal. And it's a lot of fun in co-op. 
Perfect. The last one is the new game that we mentioned at the start, and it's World of Goo 2. Now, we tried to give this a little... Well, I say we tried. We gave this a little go on Friday, and it turned into a big go, didn't it? It did. We played for a good few hours. A huge amount of fun. I played it through in single player after that and did the same levels we did again. And co-op doesn't make it any easier, but it makes it more fun. Yeah. You know, do you know what I mean? Because you sometimes you get in each other's way and sometimes you know you're just discussing things, you have different points of view of how to solve the, the physics-based puzzles that you're trying to solve. And it's just it depends what you want out of a game. If you want to blitz through a game and you want to be perfect at something, this is not the way to go. <laughs> if you just want to have a laugh and you want the towers to fall down and you want to start again because, you know, this is a great a great deal of fun. It really is, yeah. It's good. For, it's just a weird game as well. It has a very unusual humour. You end up building structures that look entirely wrong and you just have a laugh. You do. And that's what you want in couch co-op. Yeah, I would say so. Um, and I would say that for a lot of these games, actually. They're, they're games that are enhanced by talking to the person mm. next to you which obviously is what Couch Co-op's all about. So that's it. Now, what we are doing is working on a, another list, actually, that's like, it's hidden gems, mm. but a lot of them are going to be co-op. So it's a, something a little different, a bit of a twist, because, uh, well, why not? Yeah, why not? Exactly right. Don't forget to put any games that you would uh, highly recommend as Couch Co-op experiences. Don't forget, this is Couch Co-op in the comment section, and we will do lists later on that cover other forms of co-op but yeah do stick any recommendations down below a quick thank you to our patrons and our channel members for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos take care and until next time happy gaming